Now to the four chamber view. Now let's take a closer look at the four chamber view from a subcoastal window. You will see that it looks quite similar to the apical four chamber view, only that the septum is now oriented more towards the right. This is clear. We're now imaging from medial position. You have the left ventricle here and the right ventricle right here closer to the transducer. This is the right atrium and here we have the left atrium. Now, very frequently you cannot see the apical structures because you have gas. So the subcoastal view is usually not ideal to really image the supraapical structures. But you can use variants of the four chamber view by just rotating and also tilting the transducer. Thereby you can even display kind of a five chamber view. Here you would have the aortic valve. The four chamber view is ideal to also image the intraatrial septum. This is a structure which is very important if you're looking for atrial septal defects. And in the subcoastal view, you have a perpendicular orientation actually to the defect. This is why the subcoastal four chamber view is one of the most important views when you study atrial septal defects. But that will come in the chapter on congenital heart disease. As a short review, we are seeing all four chambers. The right ventricle is the one which is closer to the transducer. We can see the peri and epicardium very nicely here below the liver. And we have a very perpendicular orientation to the intraatrial septum. This is a subcoastal view in a healthy individual. Right ventricle, left ventricle, right atrium, left atrium. Note that there is no gap between the liver and the heart. And if we now look at the different pathologies that we can look at with the subcoastal view, we've got the right ventricle here, where we're looking at the size function, but also at the thickness of the free wall. The subcoastal view is one of the best views to look at right ventricle hypertrophy. You see here some degree of RVH, which is present in this patient. And then the intraatrial septum, we have a very parallel orientation, as already mentioned several times. And here is the corresponding color Doppler of a patient who has an atrial septal defect, where we see flow from the left atrium right into the right atrium, a very parallel orientation, ideal to image. Another very important reason to perform a subcoastal four chamber view is the detection of a pericardial effusion. Now we do have a gap between the liver and the heart. This is the diaphragma and also the pericardium at the same time. And this is the equifree space. We do have some structures which are on the heart. This is epicardial fat, but this here is the pericardial effusion. And we can also look at pacemaker leads. This view is ideal to follow the pacemaker leads as they go through the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle. Mm -hmm.